Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. My name is Laisa. I want to appreciate for the introduction. I heard almost all. And I'm going to talk about the mineral analysis from the medicinal plant Imenaya Marchana Hain, known as Jatobá in Brazil. Imeana Marchana Hain, known as Jatobá, is a plant from the Cerrado region. The family is Fabacea and is a medicinal plant it's a plant that can be used for medicinal and cooking purpose. And what can understand about medicinal plant? Is any plant which has in one or more organs substances that may be used for therapeutic purpose or that are precursors of semi synthetic drugs. Specifically, this plant has the main uses for anemia, rheumatism, flu, asthma, sinusitis, and bronchitis. For pharmaceutical purpose, uh, she can be used as antioxidant activity, microbial activity as antiviral, hepatoprotective, gastroprotective, and antifungal. Uh, she's used mainly her tea and is made also a syrup of bark, leaves, and its resin. So why is important minerals? Minerals are inorganic compounds that are essential nutrients for us and may be toxic or even poison. We ingest them through food and in plants, they are organic irons in soil. We have micro elements and micro elements. I put here some examples we can say of macro and micro elements and we can divide between macro and micro elements as the, the daily recommendations. Requirements for us, that is 100 milligrams. So the minerals deficiency or accumulation can cause disorders in our metabolism. So why search for mineral profile? Because of the biological property, its toxicology in food and mineral adequacy. And this was the main question for my study. Why study minerals in medicinal plants? The mineral determination can influence pharmacological activity, recommendation daily take, toxicity, and the concentration in plants depends from the soil or localization. The same plant here, for example, in Brazil, can have different concentration of minerals from two states or the same plant here, or for example, in Europe because of the soil. So in my study, we made an analysis from, of these, these minerals in fresh barks and leaves and tea, leaves and bark tea. We use the DFR reference intake from uh, the Institute of Medicine at FDA and then visa. And for do this comparison, you use the nutrient recommendation for the population, the estimated average needed, the recommended dietary allowance, adequate intake, and tolerance upper intake level. That would be the potential risk of cause adverse effects. For our material methods, we use leaves, barks, and their teas of Menaya Marchana Heine from Campo Grande, Mato Grosso do Sul, Brazil. And it was registered in our national system of genetic resource management and associated traditional knowledge. Firstly, we process uh, separately the leaves and the barks and they were cooked for 15 minutes. And after cooling, we made the filtration, almost uh, 30 milliliters from the barks and to obtain the barks and the leaves tea. For the in natura barks and leaves, we cut the fresh barks and leaves, we dry in the oven and make a pulverization power. And then we put in a falcon tubes, name it from one to six, that went to microwave digestion 
we have seven, uh, the tube seven H just with water and acid. And then later we complete it into 30 milliliters and we put for determinated in the inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectrometry, the ECP. Our comparison criteria was the recommendation the intake and the quake intake. We also made a total array upper limit of the ingestion and we compared it with the FDA for children, adolescents, men and women, where they, they may consider less than 10% not a source between 10 and 19% good source and above 20% an excellent source. And we had these elements with these concentrations. I put it all in here, but we'll talk later one by one. I will start with the micro elements as sodium. And we found in the in natura leaves, tea in bark, tea and in leaves, these uh, numbers. And we can see that sodium is not a source by the FDA. It has no risk of adverse effects. But uh, we, if we eat a lot of sodium, we can have some health problems. So we have to, to be careful with what we are eating together or drinking together because it participates from the process of absorption and active transport of amino acids. It regulated the pH and glucose and it's high level. We can develop in cardiovascular disease, impartation, and even chronic renal failure. So we have to be careful with what we are putting these in our everyday eating. For calcium and potassium, we had these results. And you can see that for calcium, we have an excellent source for the in natura barks and leaves. The teas are not a source and that present no risk of causing adverse effects. For the potassium, it's not a source for leaves and tea also. For barks, it's only a good source for children from one to eight years and adolescents, and an excellent source for children one to three, or a good source for children four to eight adolescent men and women. So the calcium participates in metabolic reactions and link it to enzymes that participate in blood coagulation, regulation of muscle contraction, hormonal section, and real transmitters as the potassium participates in the regulation of cellular nervous system function and is the main com component of pH. So you can use calcium and potassium if you have, uh, you can use this plant to, to repose this, these, these minerals, but just in natura leaves and in natura barks. In teas, you will not, help you at all. For the uh, magnesium, we had uh, for almost all good uh, concentrations because it's practically an excellent source for in natura leaves, barks, the teas. So it's an excellent uh, source for, for you. However, the in natura leaves may cause some adverse effects in children from one to three years. So if you're going to give this plant for a child in this age, you have to be careful of how much you are giving to, to this child because magnesium will participate in the carbohydrate metabolisms and the synthesis of proteins. And also it, the lack of magnesium can cause cardiovascular, kidney disease, diabetes, and hypertension. So, as always, you have to be careful. Among phosphor phosphorus uh, is a, not a source in the leaves, but in the barks, uh, it's a good source, an excellent source for bees, leaves, and just a good source for children and women for barks. However, uh, does not cause adverse, uh, the risk of adverse effect. 
And the phosphorus is important for energy storage, bone minimization, and is a structural component of cells. And in the lack of phosphorus, we can have hypophosphotamia, that is loss of appetite, anemia, muscle weakness, bone pain, and osteomalacia. As sulfur, uh, we didn't have uh, any uh, recommendation for example, to compare for FDA. So we just have the, the results. Uh, however, I put some things about sulfur, for example, the, in the inorganic sulfur, if you have a high digestion, it can cause nausea, headache, and cautious. We can nail this sulfur, and if you nailed, you can have pneumonia, chemical pneumonia, in the skin, dermal irritation. And if you have a chronic exposure, you can have chronic lung disease as emphysema and asthma, sinusitis, uh, erythematous, and you can have even sedative lesions. So we have to be careful, but I think it's, really wrong, we don't have nothing to compare, at least to have a, an idea of how much we can, I don't know, absorb. I, please nothing, but we, we didn't have what to compare with FDA, so. For the microelements, we had uh, the iron is really important, mainly for us women, uh, because we, women lost a lot of blood so women has more anemia than than men so here in my state uh, the indigenous people mainly the woman indigenous people use this plant for the deficiency of anemia and for the leaves and for the bark we had for example for the leaves tea no comparative parameter so the concentration was really low. The barks, no source, but if they consume in natura, it's an excellent source. So it, I think the greater biological importance is associated to the transport of oxygen, strains to the blood and participate in these metabolic functions. For, uh, for copper and zinc, we know that zinc is a structural or function component in large parts of the enzymes and is an important stabilizer for some molecular structure, structures. And the copper defenses can cause mental disease or even chronic exposure to liver failure. So with the copper would be more poisonous, let's say, because it, would, it can cause uh, worse things. So good, just the leaves is an excellent source, the in natura, and then the orders, it's a really low that we could not detect it. So we can say it represents no risk. And copper, we made an analysis for micrograms, not in milligrams as the others, because it was the recommendation from the, the FDA the comparative parameters from FDA, FDA. And zinc, it can be used as uh, to help when we have low zinc in the body, because it's an excellent source for practically all ages and in natura leaves, tea, the bark, the tea. So yes, you, you can use it if you have uh, low, concentration of zinc in your body. The nickel and, ma and manganese. Uh, nickel, no source at all, but we have, uh, may cause some adverse effects because we had a toxic, toxic level. And the manganese, an excellent source in all, and also may cause uh, some adverse effects. Nickel is really uh, worrying because it makes parts of the carcinogenics group. So it's a health risk, the, the continuous using 
because of the, the elevation of the concentration. So in low concentration, it's already a risk. That's why continue using is even higher this risk. And the nickel, it cannot be biological, chemically degraded or destroyed. So uh, it stays in the, in the, in the food, in, in, in the soil that is worrying a little bit. And for manganese, uh, we have a neurotoxic effect if using in high levels in the neurotransmitters. And we have a disease, manganese, that the symptoms can clinically uh, resemble Parkinson's disease. So you have to be careful when you want to make a diagnosis of somebody that can work with this plant, for instance. Aluminum is already uh, more known for it poisonous, but for this element, it was only found in the in natura barks and leaves. But also we didn't have any recommendation used for a found uh, uh, strange or a toxic uh, element. But it is known that the high concentration aluminum is extremely toxic because of the interaction with uh, the enzyme systems, uh, mainly in cell membranes and specific organs, or even with the cellular mechanism in general. So it, it's a, a, an element that we have to be careful when you are in, in when and how are we ingesting, even being indirectly. Uh, chrome, also a plant uh, concentration in micrograms, uh, an excellent source for oils. We didn't have uh, a toxic level to make a comparison, but I, I brought here what in, if you use in high concentrations, what is, uh, we have to be careful. For example, the chrome six is a non essential for our body and is extremely toxic, mutagenic and cancerous. And already the chrome three is essential, has a low toxicological potential, the accumulation, yes, can cause cellular toxicity and, can and is responsible for enzyme complex formation. So chrome is a mineral that you have to be careful in what type of chrome you are ingesting. Unfortunately, for my test, we could, it wasn't uh, for, because of resources, unfortunately, we could not see if the chrome was the six, the six or the three. So that's why I brought a, a curiosity about the two. And it's the same element, but one can be highly toxic and the other, no. So always to be careful with that. And to finish, what in general, what we saw, because it's a lot of information. So, we could see the potassium is higher in the fresh leaf bark tea and leafy tea. Nickel is the low is the lowest concentration in fresh bark tea and the leaf tea. Calcium is only higher in the fresh bark. Copper is the lowest in the fresh leaf. Aluminum, copper, and iron was not detected in leaf tea. So if you're going to drink the leaf tea to to because of the iron or, or anything of this is not going to work. Aluminum and copper not detected in the bark tea also. Copper was not detected in fresh bark too. So in conclusion, the deficiency or accumulation can cause disorders in the metabolism. To make a research about the mineral profile is important for its biological property toxicology for nutritional and medicinal adequacy, mainly because the have metals can accumulate in the human body over a long period and may cause adverse effects on human health. So a quality control of these medicinal plants is really important in order to protect us consumers from contamination. We have a lot of uh, plants that today are men, I think almost them. And people here where 
I leave, drink a lot this syrup and use it, these. So this it has no quality control. So you can have actually been poisoned, for instance. And this data can serve as a tool to decide the dosage of preparation from this plant when you're going to use for me the medicinal purpose. So if we're going to make a syrup and we want to see the concentration for iron, the, this is a data that can use it because at the same time that you drink or you're using for making iron, iron uh, to put iron in your body, you also put aluminum. So uh, maybe for if you, you have to probably uh, see a way just to filter the iron, for an example. But you can use these data to decide how, how much or what dosage you can use in some preparations because you can be careful with what you are using it. I wanted to appreciate my group, my master group, and my guide teacher, Professor Walter, uh, Professor Petri Daniela, and these are the references I use it. Today, I'm a PhD student in pharmaceutical science. And here are my email, if any of you need for something or want to talk more about it. Uh, thank you so much.